It's August 11th, 2024, and we're in Tamian Station at 7 in the morning to catch train 221, the first ever electric train for the public. In the weeks before, there had been many, many rumors floating all over the internet about when Caltrain's soft launch, if Caltrain's soft launch was going to happen, would take place. Which train would be the first? Nobody knew for sure until the electric train pulled into Tamian at 7 a.m. It was true that up until this train pulled in, I actually had no idea which train would be the first electric train. At this point, the rumors had pointed towards August 11th after many people had thought it'd be August 10th. August 10th turned out to be a VIP ride and August 11th would be the first day the public was allowed onto these trains, but nobody knew which trains it was. So I figured I'd just start at Tamian and find the first train to be electric. Lo and behold, 221 would end up being that train. At Tamian, we had a group of about 15 people who ended up being the very first people to ever ride an EMU in public service. They took a photo of us and posted us on the Caltrain Instagram, which was pretty cool. EMU set 306 and 305 had completed its 1,000 mile testing and was going to be the train to take us to San Francisco today. A few minutes before departure, the doors are open and we're allowed to get our first look inside of the train. On board, there are a few Caltrain members with some free goodies to give away, as well as a couple engineers from both Caltrain and Stadler on board to solve any issues. Caltrain's new KISS EMU sets are made by Stadler, a Swiss company which assembles the trains in Utah. Stadler is a well-known European train manufacturer, but recently entered the United States market in 2015 with its factory in Utah. It's built trains for Texas and for Metrolink in Southern California, and has also fulfilled the order for Caltrain. 22 sets are arriving to Caltrain, and most of the sets have commenced testing on the Caltrain corridor. Likely the first bike on an electric train. That's cool. All sets being delivered to Caltrain are seven cars long. At the front and rear of each set is a cab car. Moving from the south end, there is a restroom car and a bike car. There are two coach cars and then another bike car. That makes for two total bike cars, two cab cars, two coach cars, and a restroom car. Each car is double decked with the top level having side-by-side -side airline style seating with a couple tables and the bottom level being dependent on which type of car you're in. 
Our train departs on time from Tamian at 7.12 a.m. We can all stop in San Francisco. If you are instructed to use an emergency exit, use caution and walk to the side of the tracks at least. Probably a view you won't be able to get much since there is a roll down window shade in front of this window, but this is the view out of the front of the EMU as it arrives into San Jose. Our train makes its next station stop in Santa Clara. Plenty of rail fans out at almost every station to film this train. Our train makes its next station stop in Lawrence. At this point, the train was starting to fill up with people not expecting this train to come through. And the reactions were pretty candid. A lot of people were commenting about the new train and how it looked a lot better than the old ones. Sunnyvale was next. I've been on plenty of new train launches, both in California and in Florida. A lot of them are unannounced, or people just aren't aware that the trains are starting to enter service. So you get a lot of very candid reactions about the train in real time. Our train had filled up. At the time of recording this video, Caltrain was still running its diesel on service with hourly headways. The only difference is that at 7 a.m. this train has a two-hour headway. So there won't be another northbound train until two hours from now. One of the many upgrades that the electric trains will bring is more frequent weekend service with trains running every half hour and starting much earlier in the day. After making all stops from Tamian, our train arrives into San Francisco on time. Oh, hey. Another one. On this day, there were only two electric train sets running, with the rest of the train sets being diesel. Our next southbound train was 2.28, departing San Francisco 30 minutes after arriving at 9.58. Note in this video the amount of electric train sets staged in the siding tracks or on platform tracks. It's pretty crazy how quickly this changed in the month in between the soft launch start and the full electric train launch. In, the, in that month, diesel trains were retired and they started to fill up the sightings as electric trains entered service. There was tons of attention at Fourth and King Station for train 221, the first EMU to ever arrive in public service in San Francisco. This same train would turn around as train 228 southbound to Tamian. And just like that, half an hour later, train 221 opened up for boarding on time. And directly next to it was a rail enthusiast treat a double header set with two F40s. This set would make an appearance later in the day. <laughs> the double header F40 set showing the age of the F40s as it's likely that one of those two locomotives was unreliable, needing a backup locomotive to fill in in case it had any trouble. On train 228, my plan was to meet up with the second EMU set, train 229, coming out of Tamian to San Francisco at Hillsdale, where the two would intersect. I thought this would be a tight connection. It turned out to not be. The doors are about to close. For your safety. At this point, train 228 was running on time. The train did go into emergency in between Bayshore and South San Francisco. 
Later on, I'd find out it was some kind of minor PTC issue because the train immediately started up again. This is On board 228, someone had leaked the electric train schedule for the day. They had told me that train 229 was supposed to be an EMU. So imagine my surprise when train 229 showed up as a diesel train. As it turned out, this was a extra train meant to send a couple Caltrain staffers to a party in San Francisco, but was also open to the public. 2.29 was a half hour late. This was the same double header from Fourth and King, and we'd actually see this train a third time in San Jose in the evening. Two twenty nine was a half hour late, owing to some minor issues and overcrowding on board from a Giants event. This was the inaugural run of EMU set 309 and 310, which had also completed its 1,000 mile testing and was entering service this weekend.
leave train 229 at Bayshore a half hour late, and we catch a couple other Caltrain trains before making our way back in the evening. Train 240 runs on time southbound to Tamia with that same 309 310 set. Bayshore is the start of the T Muni line, which runs into Chinatown. It's unfortunate that the Caltrain station is quite a walk away from the T, and the walk is definitely not accessible. It's up a massive hill. So this connection is actually not perfect. Ending the day in San Francisco, we catch the second to last EMU train heading southbound, train 260 which is now 20 minutes late. <laughs> Though I never heard any official confirmation on the delay, I know that during this day they had had two PTC issues resulting in the train entering emergency, as well as a couple very minor door issues and issues with the public address system and the screens. These are issues that would plague the trains throughout the entirety of the soft launch and currently plague the trains in the first week of electric service, which is when I'm editing this video. Departing 4th and King, we get a good look at the two X Amtrak AEM 7s, which have relocated to the state of California, one of which is wearing a Caltrain paint scheme. These AEM 7s were intended to be used to test the electric overhead lines, but were really never used for that purpose. There are very few recordings of these trains actually running on the Caltrain corridor. <laughs> Caltrain's electrification had been something on the radar of the California government for decades. The project was started in 2016, when the contracts for the construction and for the trains were awarded. Groundbreaking began in 2017, and after numerous delays, the first fully electric corridor run was completed in June 2024. As far as the Stadlers were concerned, the first electric train was assembled in 2020, and the first train arrived on Caltrain property in 2022. When I spent three months in California, there were already a few of these trains in the Caltrain yard, close to San Jose, and when I had arrived back in 2024, there were even more. <laughs> Testing began in 2023. The full corridor run was conducted on 2024 in June. I had the chance to film a number of these test trains before the inauguration of electric service on September 21st. I'll be posting some of those videos that I filmed after the soft launch, but I already have some of the videos posted from before the soft launch. The electric test trains ran at all hours of the day. On weekdays, they typically ran around 10 p.m. and would go as late as 2 a.m. On weekends, they'd run interspersed in between the weekend trains throughout the day. 
As we get closer to San Jose, the train empties. This is a good chance to take a look at some of the amenities on board. There's power outlets under every single seat. Although a common complaint during the soft launch was that the power outlets were difficult to use as it was hard to get an electrical plug inside of them. Each seat is comfortably padded and there's a luggage rack above the seats. Most seats are an airline style with a few tables, I believe four per level, so eight per car on each car. A massive upgrade that all customers will notice is the automatic announcements and wayfinding screens. This is a huge improvement from the muffled announcements made by the conductors on the previous cars. The last major upgrade is that all Caltrain trains now have free Wi-Fi on board, which I did get to test and was reasonably usable. With the introduction of the electric trains comes a new schedule. On September 21st, just over a month after the start of the soft launch, Caltrain will launch its new electric train schedule and decommission the entire diesel fleet. Personally for me, this meant that as of this day, it was time to start to document the final days of the diesel trains. Because of the improved acceleration and braking of the new trains, the new schedule is a massive improvement for commuters. For the local trains, the new electric service will take 77 minutes between San Francisco and San Jose compared to the 100 minutes on a diesel train. Trains will now run every 30 minutes on weekends and there are increased services on the weekdays with express trains making the same amount of stops for the same time that it would take the diesels. Caltrain's fastest electric service between San Jose and San Francisco now takes 59 minutes to get between the two cities, which during the rush hour is definitely faster than driving. Final feedback on the trains is that these trains are extremely comfortable and I'm excited for the future of Caltrain. I think that every single commuter will think that this is a massive upgrade compared to the loud and bumpy diesel trains of today. Although my review of the new trains is pretty much almost all positive and it is a huge upgrade from the trains of before, I think that the only piece of criticism that I and many other commuters have of these new trains is the bike car. There is no longer enough seating to sit with your bicycle. And this is a huge concern being that theft of bikes does happen aboard Caltrain. And if you want to bring a really nice bike aboard Caltrain, especially for a weekend ride in San Francisco or along the corridor, it's a lot less practical to do so now that you cannot sit with your bike. I would have liked to see something like what Ace has, where on one side there is room for bicycles and the other side there is seating. That way you can sit with your bike instead of having to go sit outside of the bike. During the duration of the soft launch, I saw a lot more people standing with their bicycles in the bike park. After arriving at San Jose, our train went to a siding track on the west side of the station. San Jose Deardon is a busy spot, with all Caltrain trains stopping here, as well as Amtrak trains and Ace trains. This is a northbound Capital Corridor train to Sacramento.
the start of the electric fleet comes the end of the diesel fleet. Some of these locomotives and cars have been in operation since 1985, making millions of miles of round trips between San Jose and San Francisco. In the coming weeks, I'll be documenting the final days of the diesels. Stay tuned for those videos. Amtrak 14 departs San Jose on its way to Seattle. After an hour wait, Caltrain 264 arrives to take me the final stop from San Jose to Tamian. After a whole day of riding EMUs, it really did feel like a pretty big downgrade to be riding the gallery cars again, but it definitely invoked a small sense of nostalgia knowing that these would be gone within the next month. The gallery cars are known for their weird double deck layout which is optimized for checking tickets so that the conductor does not have to go between two levels. On the Caltrain corridor, they're also known for being way more bumpy than any other train, including the Bombardiers. They are extremely bumpy. These cars have been in service since 1985, and they're showing their age. The Caltrain's EMUs are fantastic, as this video hopefully shows, but these cars will be missed. At Tamian, two galleries.